The FBI wants Teresa's help? It's vital if we're to complete our investigation of Mr. Crane's empire in time to avert the catastrophe, we've discovered he's been planning for some time now. Wait, now when you say catastrophe, what are you talking about? A, a bomb or economic collapse, environmental destruction? What? Sorry, I can't be more specific. Suffice it to say that thousands of people will be affected if this plan isn't fully uncovered and stopped. My grandfather can't hurt anyone. He's in a coma. The catastrophe could be activated by others or by a machine. We're not sure at this point, but it's urgent we find out. Which is why you need access to Crane Industries. Yes, sir. And since Alistair left his wife, Teresa, in charge, I need to get her permission to expand our investigation. Where can I find Mrs. Crane to get it? Chances are Teresa's working late in the library. Now, I'll go tell Teresa you want to see her, but don't assume that she'll welcome the FBI into Crane Industries with open arms. She may hate Alistair, but she loves the power running Crane gives her. You think Rebecca, being the slut that she is, would have taught her daughter how to kiss a guy? No, guess not, huh? Mm-mm. Gwen looks like she's kissing a lemon instead of the sexiest man in the world. Damn her. For letting Ethan help her finish her work so they have time to be intimate like this. I know what I need to do. I need to call Collier again and tell him that he needs to give her even more work. Or maybe you could send her out on a business trip to Outer Mongolia, anywhere, just to keep Gwen away from Ethan. <laughs> Thank you for helping me with my work Mr. Collier wants done for tomorrow. <clears throat> Anything for the cause. Yeah, me keeping my job. Yeah, that and to some well-deserved couples therapy. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to uh, unburdening myself. Oh, you and me both. Mm. Tell you what, you light candles, you put on music, I'm going on champagne detail. And I'm gonna have one wonderful night with the woman that I love, okay? Mm. No, I'm the one that you love. Hey, c can you do me a favor? Of course, sir. As long as it isn't something that'll impede your recovery. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, I promise you, what I need is the best medicine that there is. So you know, Sheridan, how the two of you meet? Sheridan, you tell me. Simple question, isn't it? Yes. Y yes, it is. Um, Chris and I have known each other for a while. He's my friend. Sheridan may always love Luis, but they're not a couple anymore. Sheridan's my wife now. Luis is no threat to our marriage. Do you say you talked to God? Earlier tonight. I think God told you to whip yourself until you bled? Mother, God knows what I'm doing. See, he knows that it's my penance for committing incest with Chad. You think your fever is making her hallucinate? I don't know what else it could be. God was here tonight. And I'm doing his will. Whitney, I told you, the church does not condone abusing oneself as penance for sins. Yeah, but Mother Superior, you told me that I should trust God to, to, to help me with my urges and, and to redeem myself. Yes, but not by whipping yourself. My sins are of the flesh, so the flesh must suffer. Whitney, God didn't tell you to whip yourself raw. Okay, it must have been some sick freak playing God. You were just too feverish to know the difference. No, Chad, that's not how it was. God was here tonight, and he told me what to do.
Let me make sure I understand you, Agent Morrison. You're asking me, as Mrs. Alistair Crane, to help the FBI expand its investigation of my husband's empire because you allege that he's plotting a catastrophe that could potentially hurt thousands of people? That's right, ma'am. And you want my full cooperation, even though you won't tell me what this is about? I'm sorry, Mrs. Crane. I'm not at liberty to discuss these details with anyone. It's that serious. You have no idea. You're slandering my grandfather when he's comatose and can't defend himself. As I told Miss Crane, your husband's condition gives us a chance to speed up our investigation and hopefully avert a disaster. So what exactly do you need me to do? Give the Bureau access to everything at Crane Industries. We'll need personal records, computers, employees, uh, Mr. Crane's personal information, everything. Teresa's uh, late brother, Detective Luis Lopez Fitzgerald, had all of Alistair's files in his possession a while back, but had to give them back to save his mother's life. Teresa, I say you finish what Luis started. Go for it. And at what cost to the company, though? Could mean the end of Crane Industries. But, but my grandfather has spent his whole life transforming Crane Industries from a regional business to a worldwide conglomerate. Miss Crane, your grandfather's conglomerate is the epicenter of a catastrophe in the making. Don't you want to see it stopped? Uh, of course. Yes, I just have a hard time seeing my grandfather for the monster he seems to be. Look, I know the risk to your husband's empire is enormous. But if Alistair weren't incapacitated, we'd have no hope of gaining access to Crane Industries. And your husband would probably succeed in what he's planning to do. But since he's in a coma, I think there might be a chance we can avert this disaster. Will you help me, Mrs. Crane? What would Ethan tell me to do? Absolutely. Do whatever you have to do to get to the bottom of what's going on. If there's a catastrophe waiting to be unleashed, we've got to stop it before it begins. God appeared to me. He said that he would wash away my sins, my lust for Chad, my, my sick desire of wanting a life with my brother and my son, if I did my penance. So God told you to whip yourself. Did he tell you to let your wounds get infected as well? Suffering brings you closer to Christ, Mom, and through him to God. To mortify your own flesh, Whitney, God would not ask that of you. Hell no. Whitney, God didn't appear to you. Your fever just made you imagine the whole thing. No, Chad. I saw God. <laughs> okay, so, so where is he now? I don't know. Back in heaven, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's tripping big time. Whitney, are you, you say God was here in, in this room? No. Of course not. It's impossible for any outsider to wander through the convent and, and to violate a novitiate like Whitney. It's unthinkable. Mother Superior, I saw him. I saw God. And where did you see him, Whitney? It, it was in the chapel. Right after you left, he, he, he appeared to me. But you initially mistook the beam of my flashlight for God's holy light. No, I... I know, and I was wrong about that. God's light was was so much brighter, and it shone all around him. So he was, it was in the chapel? Yeah, in the chapel. All right, look, if Whitney's not imagining this, then some sick person turned a spotlight on her, told her to whip herself so he can get off watching it. No, Chad, that's, that's not how it was. It was God. He knew me. He, he knew my name. He knew my sins. It was God. Whitney, could you show us where in the chapel you saw God? Yeah, of course. I'll never forget it. Sharon, what's going on? Oh, Luis is resting. I'm talking about what you just did. I saw you take off your wedding ring and put it in your pocket. I'm sorry. I should have told you what I realized I need to do. What are you saying? 
Are you leaving me to go back to Luis? Tonight, tomorrow, and always. Oh, honey, this this is so wonderful. Just the two of us finally being able to just enjoy each other's company. Well, you, my dear, had one of the most overloaded, ridiculous first days of work I've ever seen mm -hmm. in my life. And I would still be at the computer if you hadn't helped me. Well, it's not going to be like this for long. I'm going to find a job outside of Harmony. You're going to quit this damn job with uh. Collier, and we're going to take Jane, and we're going to move far away. Well, I guarantee you, Teresa's gonna try and stop us like she did when we were trying to leave for India. Honey, as long as I don't work as a lawyer until my crane contract expires, Teresa can't touch us. You know that's never stopped her from trying, right? Like tonight when she sends Chad over here to try and break us up and then having the nerve to show up herself, just expecting you to just up and, and, and walk out with her. She is so out there, I don't want to be around to find out what she's got planned next. We won't have peace until we leave Harmony. And the further away from Teresa, the better. You know what? I don't want to talk about Teresa anymore. Well, then what do you want to do? You know what I want to do. <laughs> mm. The FBI can bring down the Crane Empire for all I care. Do whatever you have to do to stop the catastrophe that Alistair was planning from happening. Teresa, you can't let them destroy everything that my grandfather built. Why not, Fancy? Countless people built lives for themselves that Alistair destroyed, ours included. It is my duty to end his reign of terror, just like Luis tried to before Alistair had him killed. And who cares if the Crane Empire comes crumbling down along the way? We will rebuild it the right way, so that the fear and disgust that the Crane name invokes now is replaced with honor and respect. Now, the new empire will be a force for good instead of evil. I mean it. You drag everything out into the open. You do whatever you have to do to avoid catastrophe. All I ask is that you have Chief Bennett assist you in your investigation. <sighs> Teresa, I don't think the feds need my help. But I do, Sam. On New Year's Eve, Alistair admitted that he was behind the deaths of two of my brothers. And if he does ever come out of that coma, I want you to have proof of his involvement so he rots in prison for the rest of his wretched life. Thanks. It's all taken care of. Excellent. I was happy to help. Why don't you get some rest? It'll be a while before anything happens. Oh, that's a good idea. Let me just finish checking your vitals to make sure you're up to this. <laughs> Trust me. If there's anything that's going to cure what ails me, this is it. I hate to think that you're leaving me to be with Luis. Please. Look, I'm not leaving you. I love you. But you love Luis as well. I don't deny that, but I'm not leaving you to be with Luis. I told you I'm committed to you and our life together with James. Then why did you take off your wedding ring? To make things easier on Luis. It's gonna be hard enough for him when he finds out that we're married, but to tell him now would be too hurtful. I, I thought you understood that. I do, and I agree that we should wait to tell him that we're married, but... If I continue to wear your ring, Luis is bound to notice. But he hasn't so far because he's so overwhelmed and his vision is still compromised. I understand what you're saying. But I still don't like it. I know. And I'm sorry. I, I appreciate you going along with this. But you know, wearing a ring isn't the only thing that means that we're married. Because in my heart, you and I are husband and wife. You are the man I'm committed to. You are the man I plan on spending the rest of my life with. You're sure about that? I don't want to lose you, Sheridan. You won't. What is it? I've been watching you with Luis. And I could see the bond you have with him. And how incredibly strong it is. 
It's a little overwhelming at times. I'm sorry it upsets you. Don't be sorry, Sheridan. Be honest. Before you promise to live your life with me, be sure you can live your life without Louise. Mrs. Tran, you do understand that once you give the FBI permission to expand our investigation, you cannot withdraw support no matter what we start to find. I understand completely. I want to finish what my late brother Louis started. I want all of Alistair's secrets exposed and his dirty dealings revealed. The people and the countries that have been underneath Alistair's thumb deserve to be free. So I have your permission to dig for dirt, Tom. Uh... Wherever I see fit. Not only do you have my permission, Sam, you have my blessing. If my grandfather is doing terrible things, I want them stopped. And we all do fancy. But in my heart, I still find it hard to believe that he's such a monster when he's never been anything but wonderful to me. Look, love can blind us, all right? We all know that you love your grandfather. And that, in his own way, he loves you too. But it's different with everyone else. I mean, you've been in harmony long enough to have seen that. Well, it doesn't make this any easier. OK. That's why I'm here. I am here for you, to help you get through this. Thank you, Noah. I don't think I've ever needed you more. <laughs> so I assume that the FBI doesn't plan to raid the crane complex and start tearing things apart. This is still a covert operation. So, Sam, do you think that it would help the FBI to have a crane employee assist them in their search? Someone trustworthy, without an agenda, someone who knows the company and how it works? That's a great idea. Yeah, I agree, Mrs. Crane. But does such a person exist? Absolutely. I know the perfect person to ask. That was great. Mm. Honey, I am sorry. I'm so exhausted mm. to wake up early tomorrow. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> I just want, no, I want a couple more minutes. Mm. Just a couple. Okay. I never say no to you. Mm. I love you so much, you know that? I love you. And I love being with you. And there's moments like this where I feel like our life is almost perfect. I feel like I can almost forget that Teresa's out there no. plotting to break us up. Honey, she can plot and scheme all she wants. There's nothing she can do to hurt us. Oh, honey, that's not true. And you know it. There's a lot she can do to hurt us, especially now that she has all of Alistair's power. I just know she's going to try and stop us from leaving. Honey, Teresa can give it her best shot. She's going to lose. Hmm. Well, from your sweet lips to God's ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whitney, we are going to show you that some creep was messing with your head, making you beat yourself so you can get off on watching it. Chad, stop it. I'm sorry. I just want Whitney to see that she doesn't have to abuse herself anymore. So, sweetheart, where exactly is it that you saw God? Well, I was right there. Um, and I was praying again right after you left, Mother Superior. And there was another light. At first, I thought, I thought it was you coming back to tell me something. But then I saw this light. And it was so bright. At first, it, it completely blinded me. But then the wall completely opened up. And it was God. I know it was him. I know it because he knew me. He knew how I felt, how I felt about Chad. So you say the, uh, the wall opened up here? Yeah, right there. You gentlemen are welcome to check, but I've lived here long enough to know every inch of this convent. That wall doesn't open up, and there's nothing behind it. I saw him on the Superior, and he talked to me. He talked to me. Look, it's solid. I don't see a gap where it could have opened. 
Yeah, Chad's right. God doesn't need a gap. But you didn't see God, okay? Someone must have heard you praying and took advantage of it. Chad, I know what I saw. God was here. He opened up that wall and he talked to me. It was a miracle. You must know how deeply I love you. I will always love you throughout eternity. Please, you don't die. I'll wait again. you, Sheridan. We're gonna be together no matter what. Answer me, Sheridan. Can you say goodbye to a life with Louise? It's no secret that Louise and I are soulmates. And we've shared love through the years, throughout all our past lives. But in each lifetime, we never ended up together. We're always separated. That might have been true up until now, but in this lifetime, things are different. This time, Luis didn't die after all. He's alive and expecting to live out his life with you. I know, and that's never happened before, at least not that I know of. Every time before when we were separated, that was it until the next lifetime. It's as if we've been handed a second chance, a chance to get it right. I can't imagine how tempted you must be. To love someone for eons, only to have them taken away over and over. And now to have them back. Ready to fulfill a dream that's been denied you for ages. I know I'd be torn if I found out Marine was still alive. You would? But then I'd choose you. Marine was my past. You're my future. The question is, am I yours? God was here. He talked to me. There's no place for the wall to open with. Whitney, the Mother Superior assures us there's no... There's no space behind that wall where someone could be. No, no, not someone. It was God. God was there, and he told me that he was going to wash away all my sins. Whitney, honey, I, I know that you think that you saw God. But when we got here, you were running a very high fever. And, and sometimes when that happens, it, it makes people hallucinate. No, I really did talk to God, Mom. I, he was here. He was right here. God, they don't believe me. They think I'm crazy. No. <laughs> no, honey, never crazy. Just, just overwrought. Would you let us take you back to your room so you can get some rest? You'll feel better in the morning. Yeah, Julian's right, honey. You need time for your, your mind and your body to heal. Yeah, listen to them. No, no. Why won't you all believe me? Look, I did. I saw God. I saw him here. It, it, tonight, I saw him. Mother Superior, Mother Superior, tell them. Tell them that miracles happen, and they happen all the time. Of course they do. But tonight's miracle was you getting the help you needed before it was too late. No. No, it, 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 was, it was God. I, I saw him. He talked to me. Whitney, Whitney. He talked to me. He opened up the wall, and he talked to me. He told me that he would wash me in my sins. It was like... Whitney. <laughs> Now that Luis is back, do you know without a doubt that you want to stay married to me? Or do you want to pick up where you left off with Luis? You were there when Agent Hall told me that Luis died. It was cruel enough that I lost my son, but to lose Luis on top of that, I would have just shut down completely if it weren't for you and James. I would have drowned in sorrow, but instead I found new purpose New joy. New love. And it's not the same love that I feel for Louise and Marty, but it's just as real and meaningful. I love you. And I'm committed 
to you. And yes, Luis will always be a part of my life. He'll always be a part of my heart. But I'm married to you now. And of course, I still want to find Marty so that he can be a part of our family. But to leave you to go back to Luis, that's just out of the question. Are you sure about that? Luis and I got to the point where our love just wasn't enough. He cost me my son because he wouldn't or, or couldn't take that leap of faith that would have changed everything. And yes, I, I feel bad that I sent him away, that I insisted he go look for Marty. I acted out of hurt and anger and I regret that. And I could even pretend now that none of that matters now that Luis is alive. But I would only be fooling myself. The truth is there is no going back. Even if Marty's found? Right so. So there's no way that you and Luis will ever reconcile? You're my future, not Luis. I believe you, Sharon. I will tell Luis that we are married as soon as he has the strength to hear it. Great. Well, thanks again for being available on so short notice. Just come on up and we'll be waiting for you. Bye. Can't wait. My surprise is gonna blow Sheridan away. Yes, Teresa may have Alistair's power, but she can't use it to come between us. Oh, honey, never say never when it comes to her. <sighs> honey, I don't doubt that she'll try to win me back again. She probably will, but it's not gonna work. Okay. What if she gets wind that we're leaving Harmony and she stops you from getting any job anywhere else? You know, what do we do then? No, it won't come to that. Honey, seriously, though, what... What would you do? Well, honey, don't take this the wrong way, but now that you're working, I really don't have to do anything. I mean, trust me, I would rather work. I really would, but I can keep taking care of Jane. What do you think she would do then? <laughs> you need to stop worrying. You really do. Because she can plot, she can scheme until her big brown eyes have cataracts in them, Gwen, but honey, I love you way too much to leave you. Ethan Winthrop is the perfect person to help the FBI investigate Crane Industries. He's Chief Bennett's son, even though he was raised as a Crane. And having worked as a corporate attorney for my husband's company, he knows Crane Industries inside and out. Plus, no one is more trustworthy than Ethan. The Beer is well aware of Mr. Winthrop's sterling reputation. And we also know that he no longer works at Crane. That is correct. However, it is my understanding that he has yet to accept another position, so that means he's still available. But you better act quickly, just in case. Okay, I'll meet with Mr. Winthrop right away. A and when you do meet with Ethan, um, Agent Morrison, don't mention that I suggested the FBI make him its point man at Crane. Why not? Ethan and I had differing viewpoints about the direction things were headed toward the end of his tenure at Crane. It might make him feel uneasy if my name came up in association with him coming back to work for the company. Very well, Mrs. Crane. I'll leave your name out of it. Perfect. Okay, what if Teresa forces Mr. Collier to fire me, then makes it so I can't get a job anywhere else, and then you can't get a job anywhere else? Honey, what in the world would we do then? Honey, my dear, you are worrying too much. But I have such a good reason when it comes to her. Honey, seriously. If, it, if there's a choice between us being out on the street with Jane or you going back to work for her at Crane, what would you do? Honey, okay, look, I'll tell you what I wouldn't do, all right? No matter what, 
No matter how long it takes me to get a job, no matter how desperate I get, I am not, I repeat, not going to go work at Crane. Really? No matter what Teresa does, says, or tries, she is not going to lure me back to Alistair's company. I don't care if it's as a lawyer, a mail clerk, a gopher, doesn't matter. And you mean that? Really? Mm-hmm. You have my word. Well, Mr. Winthrop seems like the perfect plan for the Bureau's investigation. Being Chief Bennett's son will make trading certain information less suspect since they see each other anyway. Absolutely. I take it you're not opposed to Mr. Winthrop returning to work in his former capacity as our cover for our investigation? Not at all. No. I'll take Ethan back any way I can get him. Knowing the FBI is after my grandfather gives me knots in my stomach. I'm gonna go upstairs, take a shower, get in bed, and hide under the covers. Look, I know you're upset, but there's... Just leave it at that, please. Okay. I'll come join you. I was counting on it. So I need a quick word before you go. Uh, okay. I'll be up in a second. Okay. Now that I'm chief of police again, I won't just be investigating Alistair. Oh? I'll have to investigate the attack on Maya and the car that crashed into the diner where you and Fancy just happened to be sitting. Um, well, Maya and I... Son, uh, I know you know more than you've been willing to admit so far. In fact, you've all but said you're in big trouble. Look, I can handle it. No, you cannot handle it. Now, you need to tell me what's going on before I officially find out. Or I may not be able to help you or Fancy. Just get some rest and help your body heal, okay? I really did see God. I did. I did. That's right, baby. You just go to sleep. Poor thing. God bless her. Well, he's been doing a lousy job of it so far. I know you're upset about Whitney's well-being, but it's not for us to judge God's work. What we see is Whitney's suffering could be part of his plan for her. Yeah, well, you think what you want. I say we go find out who's ever playing God before he messes with Whitney again. Or any of the other sisters. Now, yeah, Chad, I don't think there was anybody in the chapel. I think the fever that Whitney was running just caused her to imagine the whole thing. What about beating herself to a bloody pulp? That didn't happen tonight. No, obviously not. I think somehow Whitney has decided that God wants her to do penance so she can be forgiven for loving you. Well, that's just plain sick. I'm still shocked that Whitney would hurt herself to such an extent. And that none of you all noticed. Whitney did a good job of keeping her secret hidden. Well, no doubt God insisted that she do his bidding in private. Well, what I know about psychiatry, I think God is just a manifestation of Whitney's guilty conscience. Poor thing. And to still have been so adamant that God had appeared to her, even after we showed her that the walls in the chapel don't open to reveal secret hidden rooms behind them. Mr. Lopez Fitzgerald is anxious to see you. Is Louis all right? Go on in and see for yourselves. Luis, you almost look like your old self again. Yeah. Nurse, help me get cleaned up. That's the occasion. Oh, Chris, yeah. you've been a really good friend to Sheridan. Helping her look for our son, and <laughs> not to mention the fact that you saved my life. Nothing's necessary. Still, I, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you. So, I want you to be part of this. Part? Part of what? 
Mr. Lopez Fitzgerald? That's what the nurses call me. Yeah, right. Let's get this show on the road. I'm ready when you are. Uh, what show? What's going on? You must be Sheridan. How do you know who I am? Luis described you to a T. Now I can see why you were in such a hurry. Hurry for what? Who are you? What, what's going on? <laughs> Now we're even. Even? I don't understand. Well, first, I thought you died in the boat explosion. Then you thought that Alistair had killed me. And then Antonio got in the way. After that, it was Beth. And, well, I wanted to make it official before anyone else gets in the way. That's why I called the Justice of the Peace here so that he could make it official and marry us tonight. Oh, my God. But, Luis. What? Can you honestly give me one good reason why we shouldn't get married here and now. Bring Noah in or suffer the consequences. Don't tell me you're still in love with him. We need your help to bring down Alice to Crane. Please, I can't marry you. Please don't make me.